Well, hello there everybody. How's it going? I'm Legendary Gamer Josh YT. Welcome back to the channel. If you are a regular viewer, it is nice to see you to see you nice. If you are new or not yet subscribed, then before you continue on with the rest of this video, why don't you hit the like, press the subscribe button, and maybe give a little ring of the bell to ensure that you are notified every time I go live. So, <clears throat> It's another day, and it's another match day vlog. This is my second match day vlog of the season. And for tonight's vlog, we are heading down to my stomping ground. Um, the home of my team, Bradford City, as they take on Middlesbrough in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Now, <clears throat> tonight's match day vlog is a bit different than others. Because for the first time ever, I am experiencing what it's like from the point of view of a fan that has a hospitality ticket. Yes, we are checking out Bradford City versus Middlesbrough, third round of the Carabao Cup, in hospitality. So without further ado, let's introduce you to the manager behind all of this that will hopefully follow in the same footsteps of Phil Parkinson did 10 years ago by taking us beyond round three. And the Premiership welcomes a new team. Paul Jules Bradford City have done it and they'll be in the Premiership for the first time ever. And what a story this is for the side from West Yorkshire. At the turn of the millennium, they were a Premier League team beating Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal during a two-year stint in the top flight. A lot has changed since then. The Bantams have fallen and kept falling all the way down to Skybet League 2. In 2013, there was a glimmer of hope, promotion to League 1 and a run all the way to the final of the EFL Cup, but ultimately it turned out to be a false dawn. But the Bantams are looking to bounce back. They caught the eye by appointing former Manchester City, Southampton and Wales manager, Mark Hughes. Until you get back in, you, you don't realise how much you have missed it. Obviously been out, getting close on three years, which wasn't my intention, if I'm honest. I wanted a break after my last appointment, and uh, so I took that, but that coincided with, with the pandemic. You can be a little bit too comfortable and think, well, maybe I'm done, but I always had that, the nagging th feeling in the back of my mind that there was one more job out there. And then my lad who, uh, who represents me, Alex, he uh, came to me one day and said, what do you think about Bradford? The club at this level is a big club, and we get great crowds, great support. Maybe the club's relationship with the, the fans had been a little bit damaged before, and uh, our home form isn't great, still isn't great, which is something we need to address. But uh, since I've walked through the door, all I've, uh, all I've had is positive uh, reaction, and uh, it's up to me and, and the team to make sure that continues. There's been a real lift in across the city, you know. We, we've sort of put ourselves back on the map a little bit and Mark's been a huge part of that. And it's a, it's a clear statement of intent from us and, and it's surely a mark of our ambition of where we want to get to. Yeah, it's been a breath of fresh air, I would say, for the club. I think most of the players, and if you've asked other staff a similar question, would say that when he, when he walks in the room, there's a bit of an aura, a bit of authority about him. Mark's very experienced, he's worked at a top level, he knows how to train players and the training's been spot on thankfully my players do as i say not as i used to do so uh, uh they train a lot better than i do and there's expectation here yeah i mean it's a magnificent stadium and uh, we get big crowds and, and players have to be able to deal with that uh, we tried to bring in some more professional aspects really that the club had probably been lacking over the last the last few years where the play would just demand a little bit more of the players so they have to do their wellness every day on the, on an app on their phone so we know how they're all feeling before nine o'clock so we know that 
before I have a meeting with the manager, who's fit, who's not, who's slept well, who's got muscle soreness, this type of thing, and we'll chat about that as a department. Uh, they have to do hydration testing, they have to do body fat testing, body weight testing, hamstring power, groin power, and all these are sort of building up a picture of how fit the players are, how robust they are, who's struggling, who's not. And I can give the manager a snapshot of that information, and that might affect his selection, it might affect what we're doing in training that day. We just try and highlight the key key things um, that we think will affect physical performance and potentially your results on a match day. The one surprising thing for me was the, the amount of good quality players at this level. Sometimes I've, I've been dismissive of maybe the level of talent that there is at this level. But um, there's a lot of players here who've, who've played at a higher level or who've got the potential to play at a higher level. Almost every team has got three or four of that type of play. I think we're all excited by what's ahead of us. I think it's a, a situation that certainly we can really enjoy. Bradford's supporters are as loyal as they are long-suffering, and they will expect nothing but a genuine promotion challenge in 2023. As a professional footballer, you've got to enjoy match day. Match day is the best thing. It was exactly the same when I was a player. Uh, uh, prospect of playing in front of crowds and getting the adrenaline going and uh, competing against good opposition. That was always what really got me going. You get here and, and there's 16,000, 17,000 and, and, and when you whip the atmosphere up here, it is, it is some place to play. I think we're all excited by what's ahead of us. I think it's... Uh, situation that certainly we can really enjoy if we get this place going and if we can get a squad together uh, that, that's capable of promotion then you know this this could be this could be fantastic and not only that the momentum carries you forward for the next season as well so exciting times and we you know we just hope that we can get the job done and uh, put this club back up a league so since february since february of this year we have had a manager with fantastic credentials in Mark Hughes. Now, in his first, well, half season in charge, he took us out of the rut of mid-table security and pushed us on towards the playoffs. Now, in the playoffs... Oops. Bit of bad timing there. Now, in the playoffs... Um, Unfortunately, Bradford City did suffer defeat at the hands of Carlisle United, who went on to secure promotion to League One. So congratulations on them. But maybe this season will be our season to go back up. But first of all, will Mark Hughes do what Phil Parkinson did 10 years ago and take us on a wild cup journey? Because we all know what happened 10 years ago. Phil Parkinson took Bradford City all the way to the Carabao Cup Final, but it was known as the Capital One Cup Final back then. And, yeah, we lost 5-0 to Swansea, but at least we got to the final and made history. So all we need to do now to secure passage to Round 4 is, obviously, deal with Middlesbrough, the same way we did, we dealt with Accrington in round one and Hollywood Wrexham in round two. guys for this game tonight I paid £40 for a hospitality ticket now what perks does being in hospitality get you well for just 40 quid you have a one course meal which tonight is homemade meat and potato pie with chunky chips and gravy mm, mm, yum yummy not just that, but um, you also um, get a match the program and team sheet, I believe. And not just that, but you have a Q&A with a club legend. In, in that case, tonight's uh, 
club legend is John Hendra. Um, you then have a padded seat on the upper tier of the uh, Morrison's family stand. And at half time you have free tea and coffee. And then a full time, well after the full time whistle, you get a player that comes in and gives a speech about the match. For example, um, the man of the match. So, without further ado, let's check out the hospitality for, for my local club, Bradford City. against the Middlesbrough. Thanks very much for joining us in the Whitney's Hospitality Lounge for today's game. Uh, a big welcome, first of all, to our away directors from Middlesbrough. Very nice, very nice. Uh, big welcome as well to today's sponsors, Sondag, uh, which do have a table with our friends as well. A Bradford Balls are here as well tonight, ladies and gentlemen, with Nigel Wood. Welcome along. Lovely to see you guys here. Our match ball sponsor, Metal Tech. And the man of the match sponsor, Carling. That was, uh, that was unfair. Come on, let's try that again. Well, let's try it again. Here we go. Man of the match sponsor, Carling. Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay, now this evening, very, very shortly, we're going to be joined by a man that is a legend at both clubs. John Hendry is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll be chatting to him very shortly. Well, a birthday coming up on Monday. Helen Hoyle, where are you? Yeah. Helen Hoyle, oh, hello Helen. I'm not going to say what age they told me to say here, uh, but 21 on Monday. Congratulations. So, we've got to sing happy birthday, of course, and I will start you off. Happy birthday to you. On Monday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Helen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Helen. Big round of applause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, many people that could have the stats that this player has as a player. Let's make up. We're going to be finding out tonight in the Carabao Cup. Just don't ask me for a score prediction or who I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. Yeah, even though it's great to be here. Uh, Listen, I've seen years at both Bradford and Borough, and it was special, special years. And, uh, great memories, made so many good friends, uh, and, and, and loved, loved both, played for both clubs, and, and, and affinity that we still have for them now. I mean, that's why I'm here tonight. Uh, and let's talk about the, 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 we were talking earlier about 173 consecutive appearances. Was, was that for Borough, the 173 consecutive? No, 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 no I was too old at the, uh, <laughs> uh, No, I came here. Basically, I've been kicked on the scrap heap. Uh, Bob Gould kicked me on the scrap heap. Yeah, I know, I know. There was a bit of sympathy there. Yeah, but... yeah. Consecutive games. Well, you might think, oh, I'm not going to get tackled or things like that. I did, and I, and I took some wax and wound a few players up. But it was one of them, I mean, they just patched me up. I mean, all week I was not train, they just patched me up and just throw me out there on Saturday. I'll get through the game. And then we run up and caught me up uh, through the week and what have you. So I, I think I was a wee bit more hardy than the, 
then the player sort of picked an easy, it was just a bit old. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I've had the adventures. But uh, then we were like, we played it, God so we played at Leeds, we played at Huddersfield, we played all over. But we became, we became so strong, the bond of that, that, that team of 84, 85. And it's remained to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and talking about life after the week, we, we talked a little bit. Well guys, I've just uh, finished uh, my, my one course meal, which was um, a meat and potato pie with homemade chips and mushy peas, mm, excuse me, and, um, and gravy. And I have to say, the meal was absolutely delicious. The beef was so tender, the potatoes were done really nice, um, and the chips were cooked to perfection. The gravy was absolutely silky and smooth and rich, and I mean, overall, the meal was absolutely delicious. Um, if I could, I could have the chef that made the pie um, come to my house every day and make me a meat and potato pie with chips and gravy. But, I mean, so far it is worth the £40. I mean, I got a, uh, a drink. You can't beat a Carlin for a pre-match pie, can you? I've just had a fantastic meal. I've got myself a, uh, a raffle ticket for tonight. So, um, my number is 01126. So, fifth prize is one month membership at Pride Gym. <laughs> Imagine if I won that. Well, I get one free membership, one month free membership at Pride Gym. Then the fourth prize is £25 of family meal voucher at McDonald's. Third prize is £25 retail voucher at the Broadway Shopping Centre in, in town, in Bradford. Um, the second prize is a £40 food voucher at Mamma Mia, also in Bradford. And first prize is probably the best prize on there. VIP hospitality package for two people. I mean, I'd love to win that prize because uh, <coughs> I'd be able to uh, bring one of my friends with me, or if not, I could bring um, I could bring a family member with me. But you know, obviously, at half time the uh, the draw will be made. Hopefully, I win. If I don't, then at least I've given two pound to Bradford City. Now on this uh, score sheet here that I had, um, obviously, um, so advertises the uh, Bradford City uh, official online store. So there's a few things here, there's key rings, mugs, gift vouchers, caps, scarves, training ball, training wear, replica kit, bar gift set, bar runners, and uh, yeah, something, uh, something I might like on there. And um, everybody here in hospitality, including club legend uh, John Hendry, which is uh, on the table next to me, he has a, um, uh, one of these sheets as well. So basically, it's a prediction of when the first goal will be scored tonight. And I've gone for a very, very unusual prediction 11 minutes and 51 seconds. <laughs> <clears throat> I know I'm not going to be right, but what the hell, I mean, there's there's no point in coming to hospitality and not taking part in any of the predictions and anything, so I provided my table number, which is table 6, a nice lovely little table set out for me there, there we go. Um, I provided my uh, name, contact number, email address, whatnot, and then afterwards I'm going to mark down how my match day experience was. Now, <clears throat> all I'm going to say is uh, I'm looking. I'm now looking forward to the match itself, um, where I get to sit on a padded seat. 
and I heard from uh, someone that where we are staffed, well where everybody in hospitality is staffed, we have a fantastic view of the pitch. But anyways guys, I hope you're enjoying this video so far, if you are, don't forget to drop a like and if you are new to the channel or not yet subscribed, then make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and obviously don't forget to press the notification bell so you know every time I go live. Well anyways, I'm just looking out the window uh, from the uh, witness suite here, the legend suite, and uh, we can see the fans arriving. So for tonight's match, they are over. There will there is over 15,000 people expected, with uh, a full sellout um, away end from Middlesbrough, who are bringing down uh, 4,000 fans. So I think they're bringing more than the uh, than what they did against Huddersfield in the first round, which I did vlog. But yeah. Um, I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing the match action as well. So yeah, I will see y'all um, when I get to my seat. I have found my seat although it's not my original seat I'm not complaining because all of these seats are padded seats and not just that but obviously um, there is a season ticket holder that is sat in the same well that's been uh, allocated the same seat number as me for tonight but obviously because I'm only here as hospitality for one game obviously I'm not going to deny him uh, a chance to sit in the seat that he selected for the season but I have to say wow this is absolutely mental the view is absolute tremendous my god this is probably the best view you can get so if I ever get a season ticket here I'm gonna get if I ever get a season ticket again for Bradford I'm gonna get a season ticket here because the view is just absolutely amazing out of 10 you know probably the best view you can have perfect height and perfect just to watch the action but anyways my score prediction tonight is going to be Bradford City 2 Middlesbrough 1 will that prediction come true hopefully and if we do beat Middlesbrough tonight it'll be the first time that we will be in the hat for the fourth round since since that famous season where we did the cup run all the way to the final, which was like 10 years ago. So absolutely fantastic. But I hope you guys are enjoying the video and I hope you guys enjoy the match as well.
Thank you, gentlemen, from the two teams down onto the pace of Mrs. Middlesbrough and your Brooklyn City! Lewis O'Brien, on the south bench, number 32, Jamie Jones, number 11, Isaiah Jones, number 14, Alex Gilbert, number 16, Johnny Howson, number 19, Josh Cobert, number 22, Hayden Colson, number 26, Dara Lenahan, number 27, Lucas Engel, number 49, Lorne McKay. Grab a city line up, number one, Harry Lewis, number two, Brad Halliday, number three, Liam Reinholds, number five, Matthew Platt, Number seven, Jamie Walker. Number nine, Andy Cook. Number 11, Alex Gillian. Number 12, Clark Oswald. Number 15, Sam Stubbs. Number 22, Daniel Oyadoke. And number 37, Chisholm Avoka.
fucking spades. All our spades that we can fucking tackle. Get into it. Sloden guys, um, I'm in the um, Legend Suite again uh, for tea and coffee at half time. The half time score is currently Bradford City 0, Middlesbrough 1. I have to say the first half of Bradford City has been absolutely shambolic. I mean, when we did get the ball, we were always losing it. There were a few chances we had, but we just couldn't finish them. And to me, it seems like that we were scared of tackling Middlesbrough, getting into them and fucking them up. We were scared of, you know, pressing against them. But if we want to get to the fourth round of this um, Carabao Cup, we're going to have to play better in the second half. So guys, offer some uh, coffee now and I'll see you all for the second half. I said we have to see Rabbit and Super City. back and uh, hopefully equalise because if we keep on playing like well if we play like we did in the first half we're just going to lose by maybe four or five shambolic I'm 
never seen City play better than this. Leaving field number nine, sponsored by Exit Networks, Andy Cook. Be replaced by number 14, sponsored by Metal Tech, Tyler Smith. And also leaving field number seven, sponsored by the Good State Agency, Jamie Walker. Be replaced by number 10, sponsored by Briss, Alex Patterson. And substitution for Middlesbrough League field number eight. Riley McCree being replaced by number 14, Alex Gilbert. 54, that's 15754 with 4,188 travelling supporters from Middlesbrough. Thanks very much for your continued support.
to get into danger zone. time at the University of Bradford Stadium or as me and many 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 people call it Valley Parade uh, full time score was at Mid um, Bradford City nil Middlesbrough 2 so a huge congratulations to Middlesbrough for making it round through to round 4 and, and um, I hope that the Middlesbrough fans that have come down tonight to support their team have a safe journey back up north. However, performance wise, that is probably one of the shittest performances I've ever seen from Bradford City. We, we just couldn't string passes together hardly, and when we did, they were good, but we just. We just got outplayed, outmaneuvered and outpaced by Middlesbrough. Now looking at the team, looking at Middlesbrough tonight, um, you wouldn't think that they were uh, so low in the table in the championship, would you? I wouldn't. I think they'd be a championship team that's like fighting for promotion to the Premier League. But anyhow, the performance at Bradford Point tonight were absolute shambolic. Um, we never, we never really took off. We never really took control, and we were always giving the ball away all the time. Um, now, in the video, you'll see Middlesbrough easily fly past our defence, our midfield, and you know, in the cup, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be challenging them. 
Um, a, a few fans behind me, they, they, they described it as watching Sunday League football. Welcome back, ladies well, and gentlemen. Yeah. Oh. How are we feeling, okay? Um, right. Anyways, uh, I will the, uh, talk uh, more. Match up the stage we'll Make some noise for Daniel Oli Take a seat. Okay, Daniel, so uh, thoughts uh, thoughts after that? Disappointed to go out of the cup, but uh, what are your thoughts after that? Yeah, well, it, was, it was disappointing a uh, good team. Obviously, a few levels above us, but I think that the boys worked really hard tonight. And I think mean, you could see it when everyone performance, everyone ran for each other, and it was unfortunate, but I think we, we took good steps today in terms of how, how hard we worked. And you can see the togetherness of the team, that like, team's come a long, long, long way, so. Hopefully, just keep step by step getting better and better, and, and yeah, that's the goal. Because I think that's what, what one thing the crowd appreciated that you didn't give up at all during that game, right until the the, the very end. So there's definitely that that team spirit is definitely there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like we have great we have great players as well at our level, but uh, you know they're, they're a step above us today. But the way we work was was really positive and really good. And if we do that in the league, we should have a good time. And for you yourself, uh, you know, to get full 90 minutes out there yourself, that's obviously got to be good for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, look, like I said, a lot of good players and, and team spirit is very, is very good. So getting in the team and trying to get as much minutes, uh, minutes as I can to help the team is, is very important. But look, it's all about the team and I'm just happy to play my part today. And how are you finding it? online for Bradford. Uh, how are you finding it down at Bradford? Yeah, good. Honestly, the people are unbelievable. Fans are unbelievable. I, I, been taken back to be honest like such great people around the club I'm, I'm, everyone's welcomed me and I'm, I'm so happy to be here uh, and you're, you're an exciting young player and part of the under 20 squad as well for England uh, um, things are looking pretty good <laughs> um yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully we can keep working together as a team and yeah just focus on, on what the team is and, and just keep keeping in the team you know what I mean yeah and uh, being on there, do you, do you have to go through like the, the sort of like the initiation when you first joined? Did you have to do like a song or anything like that? Um, I'm lucky or not. You do it now. I joined early on, so it spared me the song, but uh, I paid a fine. But you paid a fine? Yeah, yeah. Is it expensive? Every new player pays a fine, so I am. Uh... <laughs> we want to hear you sing. <laughs> if you had to sing, what would it be? Oh, got my world. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to anyway, you know what I mean? I'm not a great singer, me, but I'll try. Let's hear it, come on! <laughs> okay then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm singing Rock My World, Daniel Oli Gokai! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> next time, next time, next time. Uh, uh, so next game up is uh, it, it gets Walsall. Obviously after last weekend's league win, fantastic win uh, away. Um, need to back that up now, don't we? At uh, home this weekend. Yeah, the uh, win at Newport was, was unbelievable. Could be back, and everyone could see the difference he makes. What a player, but, but the team was was amazing as well. And bring that into Walsall this weekend back here should be a good game. Like, hopefully, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, yeah, no, I think we all are. Okay, before we do the. Uh, Presentations. We've got one final question uh, from Cheerio Pursuit. Okay, uh, geography. Okay, Niagara Falls. It's a true or false one for you. Uh, Niagara Falls is the highest waterfall in the world. Is that true or false? False. 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 False is the correct answer. Yes. So what is the highest waterfall? No, I won't do that to you. Uh, does anybody else know? No, actually, Angel Falls in Venezuela. There you go, you learned something new tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to do the presentation, but first of all, Daniel Oligoke! Okay, so first of all, if we could have up onto the stage the Big Match sponsors, please, uh, which is Sondad. Sondad, the Big Match sponsors, up onto the stage, thank you. Check! Check! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wonderful, our big match sponsors, Sundown, round of applause, please. Next up, match ball sponsors, Metal Tech. If we're going to have Metal Tech up to the stage, please. Wonderful stuff. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's Metal Tech. Round of applause for them. And the man of the match sponsor, please, Carling. Up to the stage, please. Carling. Up to the stage. Carling and Harlem are young nowadays, aren't they? <laughs> And last but not least, well done Carling, uh, last but not least, uh, the golden goal was scored, uh, the first goal, 20 minutes 30 seconds, the closest we had was 20 minutes 15, which is on table two, Robert Young. Robert Young, please up to the stage and you get your ball. Congratulations, Robert. Well done. And one final applause for Daniel Oyagoke. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Okay, before we finish up, let's just run through the uh, raffle tickets. Uh, if you've made uh, a purchase of the uh, match day raffle tickets, uh, the first prize is the home match day hospitality package for two. The ticket winning number is 00126.
garden guys full time at Valley Parade aka the University of Bradford Stadium Bradford City nil Middlesbrough 2 I have to say I'm not surprised at that result and I'm actually not surprised that Middlesbrough well I'm surprised that Middlesbrough didn't score more um, tonight Bradford City were just outplayed outmaneuvered and it felt at times like watching Sunday League football Middlesbrough obviously their play patterns were on point their passes were mostly on point and it clearly shows that Middlesbrough are two divisions higher than Bradford City but I know Bradford City can play better and tonight they really really should have challenged Middlesbrough they really should have brought the challenge to Middlesbrough but they never did they were scared of tackling and they felt like Bradford City were David and Middlesbrough were Goliath obviously before David beat Goliath obviously <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, Middlesbrough brought a full sold out away end with them and um, congratulations to Middlesbrough for winning the match and for advancing through to round four of the Carabao Cup and I hope that their fans have a safe journey back up north to Middlesbrough um, but I wasn't at Newport on Saturday to watch Bradford beat Newport 4-1 but the performance time by Bradford City made me feel that the 4-1 win was just because Newport played shite but at the end of the day Middlesbrough are two divisions higher they've got better quality players than we do in League 2 and they've got a if well a recent former footballer in Michael Carrick as manager but it is football at the end of the day you win some you lose some um, hopefully Bradford City can bounce back and beat Walsall on Saturday obviously I won't be there because I'll be at work but I'll be keeping an eye on the score <laughs> But, anyways, before I start yammering on and yabbling on and boring you all, all I'm going to say is, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. If you are new to the channel or not yet subscribed, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop the like, and press the notification bell so you are notified every time I go live or drop a video. If I'm streaming an online game you all like to play, then feel free to join. Everyone and anyone is welcome to join except for my haters who kill themselves. And hurry up about it. But other than that guys, until next time, stay safe, stay positive, be legendary. And I'll catch all you legendary motherfuckers, legendary bastards, in the next one. As always guys, thank you for watching. Oh, it's a little bit dark now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your continued support of the channel and wherever you are in the world right now have yourselves a legendary day and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out guys thank you for watching